Hello once again, and welcome back to Hoosier History, Legends, and Heroes. In this video, I'm going to share with you an Indiana whopper of a fish tale. And the thing about this fish story is that it is absolutely true. I'm sure very few people, if any, have wondered what is the backstory about all those cute little goldfish you see in the pet shops, or the ones that you can win when your ping pong ball lands inside a small fish bowl holding a goldfish that you will be able to take home with you. So let me tell you the story about those cute little fish that we all had at one time or another in our lives. In 1878, Rear Admiral Daniel Amen of the United States Navy brought home from China several interesting specimens of goldfish and presented them to the Department of Fisheries at Washington. The goldfish attracted widespread attention and Americans who saw them were eager to own them. They were shown at the 1893 Chicago's World Fair where a certain businessman from Martinsville, Indiana, Eugene Shireman, saw them and liked what he saw. Little did he know at that time how goldfish would change his life in the future. On September 13, 1874, Eugene Shireman was the 10th child born to Henry and Maria Shireman in Martinsville, Morgan County, Indiana. Eugene would graduate from Martinsville High School and would attend and graduate from DePaul University where he was the captain of the football team. He would meet fellow classmate Mary Louise Harrison, who would become his wife in 1902. Eugene Shireman would inherit what was supposed to be farmland just north of Martinsville. It was actually marshy and swampy, and farming was not really an option. I read that there were people who felt sorry for him, wondering what in the world he was going to do with that land. I also read that others laughed at him, thinking that he had just inherited a major headache. I understand for a person to walk across the land, they would have to put on hip boots and would watch water snakes slithering away when they were disturbed. Now, let me tell you the story of how it all began. Eugene Shireman had a friend who owned a soap company in Indianapolis. The company had come up with an idea to give away a bowl of two goldfish as a premium or a coupon to their customers. The idea turned out to be so popular, the business ran out of goldfish. The friend told Gene of his predicament and the rest, as they say, is history. Grassy Fork Hatcheries was established in 1899. There were natural ponds on Gene Shireman's inherited swampland. Once the idea of raising goldfish, Shireman began to study the goldfish. He traveled 100 miles to spend an hour with a goldfish expert. Once he had a pond ready to start raising goldfish, he would buy 200. This original stock wasn't very good and half of them died. But this didn't stop him from his dream. He would buy more and this time more survived. He did find a ready market for them and would get to a point that he needed to hire help. Just in case you might wonder what you feed lots and lots of goldfish. Well, Eugene Shireman found what worked best for him was a diet of mush, egg yolks, flour, and hominy. By 1948, it was said that the amount of this diet that he fed to his goldfish would feed a regiment of Marines. There was a newspaper article that was published in 1923 stating that Eugene Shireman would be raising 5 million goldfish the following year. Shireman was in Indianapolis wanting to buy a large kettle to cook his mush in. The store clerk showed him several to which he would reply that they were too small. He would finally tell the clerk that he needed a kettle large enough to cook 20 tubs of mush. The clerk asked him what in the world he wanted with 20 tubs of mush. To which Gene Shireman promptly replied 
to feed my goldfish. The shocked clerk stared for a few seconds and then began to back off and went over to the man behind the desk and whispered about calling for help. The man finally moved closer and close enough to Jean to ask him questions, and Jean was finally able to convince the man that he was the owner of a fish hatchery and that his goldfish ate that much mush for breakfast each morning. In an article published in the Indianapolis News in March of 1937, it tells how Hoosier goldfish are the aristocrats of the aquarium world. The luxury ship, the Queen Mary, which was of the Canard White Star Line and was rated as England's Royal Lady of the Seas. There were special compartments made for the Queen Mary to be able to transport thousands of goldfish to be sold in England and other foreign countries. The goldfish would be unloaded in Southampton, England. Let's talk about the process of raising goldfish. You're going to start with breeding ponds. And what you do is you lower wire frames that actually have grass growing through them. And you would lower those into the breeding ponds. The female goldfish would lay their eggs around the grass and the eggs actually attach themselves to the grass. A female goldfish could lay about 75,000 eggs a season. There's just really no comment to make about that. The male goldfish would come by and fertilize the eggs. Now, once this has happened, the frames would be removed because if not, the adult fish would eat the eggs. The frames would then be lowered into concrete hatching ponds. The goldfish eggs would hatch starting like two days and within 10 days. After the 10 days, they are moved to one of the 450 ponds that were on the property. A pond of 40,000 fish will eat 30 pounds of wheat flour in 24 hours. When they are hatched, they are not the gold colors that we're used to seeing because they look like baby carp. They are part of the carp family. The baby fish have unbelievable appetites. Within three to four months, the fish will suddenly change to the red and golden colors that we are used to seeing. If there are fish that do not change to the red and gold, they are given another year to obtain the color change. If not, they were sold as bait. In the winter time, the fish become dormant. Workers will look through holes in the ice to see if any of the fish are moving. If they do see any fish moving, they'll throw food in there for them. If nothing's moving, they just leave them alone. By 1948, it was said that he would sell more than 8 million goldfish per year. They had 125 employees, and it was said it cost up to $125,000 a year to feed all those goldfish. Grassy Fork would become the largest goldfish farm in the world, and Eugene Shireman would be known as the Goldfish King. By 1940, he would own 1,500 acres of land with a third of that being underwater. On the Shireman property, there would be built a showroom where more than 300,000 visitors per year could come and visit the rock outline of the U.S. on the front lawn, along with aquariums of fish on display, and of course, a gift shop. Eugene Shireman would design a special truck to transport the goldfish. The truck had different compartments which allowed it to carry up to 200,000 fish in one haul. Normally, by five months, the fish were ready to be sold. They would also be shipped in specially designed cans of fresh water, with ice being added in the summer months. Grassy Fork had stock farms in Saddle River, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, and Southampton, England. The stock farm in Southampton was destroyed during the Nazi bombings of World War II. In December of 1914, it was announced that Eugene Shireman would be appointed as the State Fish and Game Commissioner. With all of his studies and his success, he was an excellent choice for this position. In 1966, a small section of Grassy Fork was rented by the state. The state would end up buying those acres and fish ponds. 
It is now the Sacana State Fish Hatchery and they raise catfish and walleye to stock Indiana ponds, reservoirs, and other bodies of water. In 1970, an out-of-state company purchased what at that time was still Grassy Fork. Eugene Shireman would pass away on May 30, 1960. He rests alongside his wife, Mary Louise, in the Hilldale Cemetery in Martinsville. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the whopper of a fish tale about Eugene Shireman and how he founded Grassy Fork Fish Hatcheries, which for a time was the largest goldfish farm in the world. And I want to thank the museum in Martinsville and the Sacana State Fish Hatchery for allowing me to take some photos. Please support this channel by subscribing, like, share, and leave a comment. Also, be sure to hit the notification bell so that you will be notified when the next Hoosier History, Legends, and Heroes video is uploaded. Until next time.